I ran like 23 in college. So uh, that's why I have to get my weight down to get back where I want to be. You know, that's definitely one of my my goals right now. At 2 I'm at a 240-something right now. So definitely 230, 228, definitely my range. I got to admit, creating content for the NFL in the month of July could get very comical because one, training camps are about to start, and two, some of the headlines you see in the media, just in general, the storylines that I'm covering now in relation to what I was covering like three months ago to the post-game reactions I do throughout the season, is just fairly comical, man. So if you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, I got this request in my last video. So we're gonna break everything down for you guys. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. We are almost at 100,000 followers on my TikTok page. So if you want shorter versions of this content, make sure you follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And finally, I want to start a fantasy football league with some of my followers. The best way to organize this is on Twitter or on my Discord. So make sure you're followed on both. Uh, we could definitely use a commissioner. And now that we get all that out of the way, break! check one two one two what's going on everybody so this past off season was a very tumultuous one for the tampa bay buccaneers i mean it started with tom brady retiring then 40 days later you hear that tom brady is not going to retire after all and he decided to make this decision right before free agency which definitely altered the plans for a lot of his potential free agents you saw ryan jensen come back all of a sudden tom brady reaches out to russell gage russell gage comes over to the tampa bay Buccaneers. For the most part, except for like a few important pieces like Ndamukong Kungsu isn't coming back and Rob Gronkowski isn't coming back, but players that would have left ended up returning because, well, Tom Brady's on the roster and one of those players was none other than Uncle Lenny Fournette. Now, Leonard Fournette has had a very tumultuous career. And to summarize his career, the man was drafted with the number four overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft. And the reason why that's significant is the 2017 NFL draft was one of the deepest running back classes that we have ever seen. And to be honest, based upon the analysis of Leonard Fournette up until that point, KTO has made multiple videos on it. So I highly recommend you go check it out if you want to get an idea. But this man was pretty much hyped up to be like the next Adrian Peterson. I mean, imagine Trevor Lawrence at the halfback position. And that's the amount of hype that Leonard Fournette was generating before entering the NFL. And to be honest, he lived up to the hype in college for a decent amount of time so it makes sense that he was drafted with the number four overall pick and hell man i remember when that pick went down i was kind of envious i'm a dallas cowboy fan i'd admit it but i was kind of like damn i wish we got the next coming of adrian peterson instead of ezekiel elliott obviously hindsight indicates otherwise zeke has more facets to his game than leonard fournette but following the selection of leonard fournette to give you an idea christian mccaffrey went at the eighth pick then you had joe mixon who went in the second round then you had alvin Kamara that went in the third third round and then Kareem Hunt went a little bit after that and then James Conner got selected following that and then Tariq Cohen went in the fourth round I mean this was one of the most stacked running back classes we've ever seen Aaron Jones got selected in the fifth round as well so to give you an idea Leonard Fournette went first and you can make the argument that he at least for the team that drafted him had the most underwhelming career now to summarize KTO's video as to why this went down it seemed like Leonard Fournette just wasn't as motivated motivated once he got to the NFL. I don't know if it's as a result of playing on the Jacksonville Jaguars or as a result of not getting a check. Some people say that he was injured in the earlier parts of his career because the Jacksonville Jaguars were contenders when they drafted Leonard Fournette. They made it all the way to the AFC Championship and it wasn't necessarily behind Leonard Fournette's excellence as he did rush for over a thousand yards and had a 3.9 yards per carry average and nine touchdowns, but it was something that could have been built upon for sure. Ultimately, Ultimately, we know what would happen to the Saxonville Jaguars. And honestly, I feel like that deserves its own standalone video from me. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comment section down below. But the reason I'm telling you all this is if there's one thing that's always kind of hung over Leonard Fournette's head, it was questions about how dedicated he was to the game of football and what his work ethic is like. And to be honest, after the Jacksonville Jaguars waived him in the 2019 season, he found a new lease on football life with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers were close to cutting him in his first season with them. But throughout his remarkable 
play in the playoffs where he generated a 4.7 yards per carry average with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is the greatest throughout his entire career. But at the same time, it was through four games. Leonard Fournette became a Super Bowl champion. And in 2021, he also had one of the greatest yards per carry averages of his entire career just with 4.5 yards per carry. So if he would have played a full slate of games, he would have easily gone over the 1000 yard mark. And as a result, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers rewarded this young man with a three year, $21 million contract. Fantastic. Why are you giving me a history lesson here, Mike? Well, <laughs> and this is where I think the story is just absolutely hysterical. There was a report that came out from Rick Stroud. Now I wanna say that Rick Stroud is a very reputable reporter when it comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was our top source in regards to everything that had to do with the Tom Brady retirement. And he hit the nail on the head each and every time. He even hinted that Tom Brady was going to return right before he ended up returning. So what's the issue? Well, according to Rick Stroud, he published an article mentioning that Leonard Fournette is nearly 260 pounds and his head coaches aren't necessarily thrilled about this. I mean, imagine giving a player another chance and then he shows up to camp 260 pounds and it gets crazier than just Leonard Fournette gaining weight. His response to this is absolutely insane. Check this out. The direct quote is coaches were not happy and that's an understatement when Fournette didn't participate in the OTAs, but but then he shows up at the mandatory minicamp weighing damn near 260 pounds. And that's not a good sign for a guy that you've just spent a three year contract on. Now, at the same time, there have been videos of Leonard Fournette lifting and trying to get in shape for the upcoming season. So maybe some of that has to do with muscle, but for the most part, man, no running back should be at 260 pounds. So after that, we saw a bunch of pictures of Leonard Fournette in practice. So this is how the man's currently looking and he's getting absolutely ethered for this. The funniest part about this is out of nowhere, Eddie Lacy's name started trending. So for those of you guys that don't know who Eddie Lacy is, he was a running back for the Packers. He had a great two year stint as the Packers running back, but unfortunately throughout his career, weight was a huge issue for him. And as a result, his career got cut a little short. So to give you an idea, at least via Wikipedia, peak Eddie Lacy, or at least current Eddie Lacy, which bear in mind, Eddie Lacy is now 32 years old, weighed in at 250 pounds. And bear in mind, man, Eddie Lacy was five foot 11. So Leonard Fournette's height is about six foot. So pretty much Leonard Fournette, at least weight wise, is exactly where Eddie Lacy was when he was at his peak form. Now at the same time, man, training camp's about to start. Yeah, it's not necessarily the greatest look for Leonard Fournette given his history and whatnot, but I wouldn't be shocked if he's able to drop weight to like 230, maybe 240 pounds, although that's a lot of weight to lose in a short amount of time when your craft is literally just losing weight, then I'm sure things are going to be okay. But the funny part about this is Leonard Fournette actually reacted to this entire report, saying that they wouldn't have the same energy in your face, so why entertain them? See you guys on Saturday. September 11th. Look, man, at the end of the day, I'm sure Leonard Fournette already has a significant amount of pressure on him because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers drafted Richard White in the third round of the NFL draft this past year, who is a pass catching running back who had a 6.3 yards per carry average during his time in Arizona with the Sun Devils. And while he does seem like a third down back, if Leonard Fournette isn't in better shape at camp, well, he could easily be replaced by some of the other running backs on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But regardless, man, I thought the story was hysterical and a lot of you guys wanted me to cover it. So I think he's going to be okay, in my opinion. But I'd like to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. Are you upset that Leonard Fournette showed up to camp out of shape? Or do you think this is absolutely nothing? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.